Tesla just announced they're building electric motors without rare earth materials. Gee, that sounds boring until you realize almost every electric car on earth depends on these metals. They cost a fortune, and 90% of the supply comes from one country. So if Tesla pulls this off, they could crash the price of electric cars overnight and leave every other automaker scrambling to catch up. But here's what nobody's talking about. Tesla tried this before and failed. The motors overheated, lost power, and couldn't compete with traditional designs. So what changed? Today, I'm walking you through the engineering behind these motors. The companies Tesla is racing against. The supply chain nightmare they're trying to escape. Why this could make electric cars cheaper than gas cars, what happens if it doesn't work, and whether 2026 is really the year everything changes. The rare earth problem? Let's start with why this matters. Inside almost every electric motor spinning today sits a chunk of metal called a permanent magnet. These magnets are insanely powerful. They create the magnetic field that makes the motor spin, and the stronger the magnet, the more torque you get. But here's the catch. The strongest magnets on Earth are made from rare earth elements, specifically neodymium and dysprosium. These are metals you've never heard of because they're buried deep underground and only found in a handful of places. China controls 90% of the global supply. They mine it, refine it, and sell it to the rest of the world. If China decides to restrict exports or raise prices, every car company from Detroit to Tokyo is stuck. And that's exactly what happened in 2010. China briefly cut off rare earth exports to Japan during a political dispute, and prices shot up 600% in a year. Car companies panicked. Engineers scrambled to find alternatives. But here's the thing. There really aren't good alternatives. Rare earth magnets are the best at what they do. Other materials like ferrite magnets are cheaper, but they're weak. Aluminum and copper can't create permanent magnetic fields, so the entire electric vehicle industry got locked into this dependency. Every Tesla, every BMW, every BYD electric car uses these magnets, and the cost keeps climbing. In 2020, rare earth prices were stable. By 2022, they doubled. By 2023, they spiked again because demand exploded as millions more electric cars hit the road. Tesla's engineers watched this happening and realized they had a problem. If they wanted to make cheap electric cars for everyone, they couldn't keep paying more and more for magnets that only came from one place, so they started looking for a way out. The failed experiment. This isn't Tesla's first try at ditching rare earths. Back in 2019, engineers at Tesla's Fremont factory built a prototype motor called an induction motor. Induction motors are old technology. Nikola Tesla invented them in the 1880s. They don't use permanent magnets at all. Instead, they use electricity to create a temporary magnetic field in the rotor, and that field interacts with the stator to make the motor spin. The Model S and Model X already used induction motors, so Tesla knew the technology worked. The problem was efficiency. Induction motors waste energy. They heat up they need a bigger cooling system, and they don't deliver as much torque as a permanent magnet motor of the same size. Tesla tested these motors in cheaper vehicles and found they couldn't match the performance buyers expected. The cars felt slower, the range dropped, customers complained, so Tesla quietly shelved the idea and went back to using permanent magnet motors in the Model 3 and Model Y. But the problem didn't go away. Rare earth prices kept rising and Tesla kept paying. Elon Musk mentioned this in a 2022 earnings call. He said Tesla wanted to move away from rare earths, but didn't have a solution yet. Engineers needed to solve three things. First, make a motor that's as powerful as a permanent magnet motor. Second, make it cheap enough to mass produce. Third, make it reliable enough to last 200,000 miles without breaking. For two years, Tesla's motor team worked on this in secret. They tested dozens of designs, they tried different materials, they ran simulations, and finally, in early 2023, they had something that worked, the new design. Here's what Tesla built. The new motor is called a switched reluctance motor, and it's a design that's been around since the 1960s, but never worked well enough for cars. Switched reluctance motors have a simple rotor made of steel with no magnets at all. The stator has coils of copper wire that turn on and off in a specific sequence, and that creates a magnetic field that pulls the rotor around. The advantage is you don't need rare earths. The disadvantage is the motor is loud, it vibrates, and it's hard to control. Tesla's engineers fixed this by redesigning the rotor. Instead of a simple steel block, they used laminated steel sheets stacked together. This reduces energy loss from something called eddy currents, which are basically unwanted electrical currents that create heat. They also changed the shape of the rotor teeth. 
By making them asymmetrical, they reduce the noise and vibration that usually makes switched reluctance motors sound like a blender. Then they added advanced software. The motor's controller switches the coils on and off thousands of times per second, and the timing has to be perfect. Tesla's software engineers wrote algorithms that adjust the switching in real time based on speed, load, and temperature. This makes the motor smoother and more efficient than older designs. The cooling system is also new. Because switched reluctance motors generate more heat than permanent magnet motors, Tesla added liquid cooling channels directly into the stator. Coolant flows through these channels and keeps the motor from overheating even during hard acceleration or long highway drives. The result is a motor that weighs about the same as Tesla's current motors, delivers similar torque, and costs 30% less to manufacture. That cost difference is huge. Tesla's current motor uses about 2 kilograms of rare earth magnets, and at current prices, that's around $400 worth of material. The new motor uses zero. It's just steel and copper, both of which are cheap and available everywhere. Tesla tested the motor in prototype vehicles for thousands of miles. They ran it at full power on a dyno for weeks. They drove it in extreme heat and extreme cold. And it held up. Engineers were shocked. This thing actually worked. The competition? Tesla isn't the only one working on this. BMW announced in 2021 they were developing rare earth-free motors for their next-generation electric cars. They partnered with a German engineering firm and built prototypes using synchronous reluctance motors, which are similar to Tesla's design but use a different rotor shape. BMW says their motors will be ready by 2025. Renault is also testing rare earth-free motors in their small electric cars. They're using wound rotor synchronous motors, which are heavier but cheaper. Renault's goal is to make electric cars that cost under 20,000 euros, and cutting out rare earths is part of that plan. Then there's BYD. BID is the biggest electric car company in the world right now, and they're taking a different approach. Instead of eliminating rare earths completely, they're using less of them. BID's engineers developed a motor that uses smaller magnets placed in a different configuration, which reduces rare earth content by 60%. It's not as dramatic as Tesla's approach, but it works, and BYD is already using these motors in millions of cars. Chinese companies like Geely and Neo are also researching alternatives, and the Chinese government is pushing hard for this because they know their dominance in rare earths won't last forever. Other countries are opening new mines in Australia, the United States, and Canada, and once those come online, China's leverage disappears. So the race is on. Whoever gets to market first with a cheap, powerful, rare earth free motor wins, and right now, Tesla is in the lead, the cost collapse. Let's talk about what this means for prices. Right now, the average electric car costs about $10,000 more than a comparable gas car. A big chunk of that cost difference comes from the battery, but the motor and electronics also add up. If Tesla cuts motor costs by 30%, that's roughly $1,000 savings per car. Multiply that by 2 million cars a year, and Tesla saves $2 billion. But here's where it gets interesting. Tesla isn't going to pocket all that savings. Elon Musk has said repeatedly that Tesla's goal is to make electric cars as cheap as possible so more people can buy them. The upcoming Model 2, which is supposed to be Tesla's cheapest car ever, is rumored to start around $25,000. If Tesla uses the new rare earth-free motor, they could hit that price and still make a profit. That's the same price as a Toyota Camry. Once electric cars cost the same as gas cars, the entire market flips. Gas cars have higher maintenance costs, higher fuel costs, and worse resale value. The only reason people still buy them is upfront price. Remove that barrier and gas cars become obsolete. Other companies will be forced to respond. If Tesla is selling a $25,000 electric car that's faster and cheaper to run than a Honda Civic, Honda has to do something. They either need to drop their prices or build their own cheap electric cars. Same with Toyota, Volkswagen, Ford, and everyone else. This is what Elon Musk calls the virtuous cycle. Lower prices mean more sales. More sales mean more production. More production means lower costs. Lower costs mean even lower prices. And the cycle repeats until electric cars dominate. But there's a problem. Tesla can only make this work if they can build enough factories fast enough. Right now, Tesla has factories in California, Texas, Nevada, Germany, and China. They're planning more in Mexico and possibly India, but building a car factory takes years and costs billions. If demand explodes faster than Tesla can build capacity, they'll be stuck. Other companies could catch up. Or worse, Chinese companies like BYD could flood the market with cheap electric cars and take the lead. The 2026 question. So here's the big question. Can Tesla actually pull this off by 2026? Let's break it down. 
First, the motor itself. Tesla's prototype works, but going from prototype to mass production is hard. They need to build manufacturing lines that can stamp out hundreds of thousands of these motors every year. They need to train workers. They need to source materials. Steel and copper are easy to get, but they still need massive quantities. Tesla's engineers say they're confident, but confident engineers have been wrong before. Second, the car. The Model 2 is supposed to launch in 2025 or 2026, but Tesla has a history of delays. The Cybertruck was supposed to launch in 2021. It finally came out in 2023. The Roadster was supposed to launch in 2020. It's still not here. If the Model 2 gets delayed, the rare Earth-free motor launch gets delayed too. Third, the competition. If BMW or Renault launches a cheap, rare Earth-free electric car before Tesla, they steal the spotlight. Tesla loses the first mover advantage and suddenly everyone's doing it. Fourth, politics. If the US government decides to impose tariffs on Chinese electric cars, that could slow down the whole market. If Europe bans certain types of motors for environmental reasons, that could force changes. If rare earth prices suddenly crash because new mines open, the whole rationale for switching technologies goes away. And fifth, consumer acceptance. People don't care what kind of motor is in their car. They care about speed, range, price, and reliability. If Tesla's new motor delivers all of those things, great. If it doesn't, people will buy something else. Tesla's betting everything on this working. The company's entire strategy for the next five years depends on making electric cars cheap enough to sell to the masses. The rare earth-free motor is a huge part of that plan, but it's not the only part. Tesla's also working on cheaper batteries, more efficient factories, and better software. If all of those pieces come together at the same time, 2026 could be the year electric cars finally go mainstream. But if even one piece fails, the whole timeline falls apart. And that's the risk. Tesla is playing a high-stakes game where they're betting they can out-engineer, out-manufacture, and out-execute every other car company on the planet. They've done it before with the Model 3. They did it again with the Model Y. The question is whether they can do it a third time with a brand new motor technology that nobody's ever mass-produced before. We'll find out in about two years. And if it works, the entire car industry is about to change faster than anyone expected.